Today on Design, Build, and Fix, we're going to show you how to design a hip roof in SketchUp. But before you can do that, you have to know how to calculate roof pitch, and we're going to show you that first. This is a second in the series of videos on how to design roofs in SketchUp. The first one is a gable roof. This one, of course, is the hip roof. And the one that's coming next, hip roof with a reverse gable attached. All right, so if you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, let's show you how to do this roof. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is understand what a roof pitch is. We have a rise, which is how far the roof goes up, and how far and the run, which is how far the roof actually goes over. And so what we're gonna do is take this house as an example. The span of this house or the distance across it is twenty five feet. We know that we're gonna have a one foot overhang on each side. So that means the total span is twenty seven feet. That's twenty five plus one plus one gives us twenty seven. And for this house design, it could be different. It could be a 512, 612, 712, 1212, 412, whatever it is. Let's say, for example, it's a 512 pitch. That means that the, for every 12 inches of run, it goes up, I'm sorry, 12 feet of run, it goes up 5 feet. It could be 12 inches or 5 inches. Either way, it's the same. All right, so it's a 512 pitch. And so in order to do this, what we have to do is set up a proportion. And so I'm going to do this, 5 over 12. This is the rise, that's the run, and we're going to cross multiply it with, well, we know that our run for our house is 27. But realistically, it's not 27. It's actually going to be half that because we're only going up halfway and then we're coming back down. So if we take 27 divided in half, you're going to get 13.5 feet, and that's going to be... Uh, over or under an X. So X is what we're trying to find is what is the rise because that's in question right now. So we're going to just cross multiply this. We're going to take 5 times 13.5 and then 12 times X. So it's going to be 12X is equal to and we go 5 times 13.5 gives us 67.5. Then what we have to do is isolate the x, divide by 12. So x, we've crossed those out, x equals, so it's 67.5 divided by 12. That's going to give us 5.625 feet. All right, well 5.625 feet is an issue because that's not in 0.625 isn't in inches it's actually in you know five eighths of a foot so the better way to do this isn't to divide it by feet is to do it by inches so what we're going to do is come over here and convert everything into inches because these are five feet all right so what we're going to do is take five times twelve gives us sixty and twelve times twelve is a hundred and forty four and then our x stays the same and then if we take 13.5 feet multiply it by 12 it's going to give us a hundred and uh... let's see 13.5 times 12 gives us 162 inches so we're going to take 60 times 162 and 144 times x. So we're going to 144x equals 162 times 60 gives us 9720. We have to isolate the x, so we're going to divide by 144. So x is going to equal 9720 divided by 144 gives us 67.5 inches. So that means that this right here with a 512 pitch is going to give us 67.5 inches. So that's how you calculate pitch. Well we have to actually create a surface to draw on because this right here is actually a group. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and start uh, drawing rectangles on top of the surface that we already have. Now make sure you always pick the outside edges 
of your exterior walls. You don't want to pick the interior edges, you want to pick the outside of it. And you're going to have to do it in sections. And once you have all those sections done, then we have to clean up the drawing. And so I'm just going to go in here and erase where the edges of the uh, rectangles came together. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset that edge to create, zoom in here, I'm going to offset the edge out 12 inches. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the overhang that you have for your house. Now in the United States, uh, the traditional, the standard is a 12 inch overhang. Some people have 6 inches, some people have no overhangs. Uh, it's always the best bet to have an overhang. So we're going to choose to do the 6 inch. That's what I usually do. And so now what we're going to do is push pull this up. Now we want to push pull this up 6 inches because 6 inches is the size of the fascia board that you're going to have on a hip roof or a gable roof. Uh, either way, it's going to be a six inch. So then I'm going to take this and drag this up to the same same height and make this one solid surface. So I'm just going to go in here and start erasing uh, these surfaces. Now for some reason, as you can see, there's a little dot that's being left. I'm going to have to go in there and get those dots gone too because we don't want to have those interfere with other things. And for some reason, it's doing it on all of them. didn't take too long to get rid of everything. Alright, so now that we have um, all of our everything's cleared up, we want to get rid of some of this other stuff that we don't need. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn off every layer that I have because all we're going to be dealing with here is the roof stuff. Alright, so now we have to do is you're going to pick the longest edge or the longest wall in your house which is going to be this one for me and what I'm going to do is I want to measure that to make sure I know how big that is is 47 feet alright so what we have to do is we're going to use the zoom or not the zoom but we're going to use the follow me tool to follow this path and put a profile on which is going to be our our rise and run of our roof slope. So what I want to do is find the midpoint of this and put a guide on there. So I'm going to come over here to the edge and I'm just going to get the midpoint and bring it this way until I find the midpoint on this wall. Let me zoom out a little bit further. I'm going to find the mid, there it is. That's the easy way of doing it. Notice it said 23 feet 6. So it's going to be 23 feet 6 both ways and that's the midpoint. So now you've already watched the previous video on how to calculate the slope, uh, the pitch of your roof and this roof is going to have a 612 pitch to it and uh, the calculations come out that it's going to be 11 foot 9 tall. So I'm going to grab my guide and bring this up 11 feet 9 inches and now I'm going to create my profile. So I'm just going to go from the corner to the intersection down and I'm going to go back to the, where I started to make sure it closes it up. Okay, so I can get rid of my guides. Uh, in a few seconds here, we're going to have a lot of lines on here. We want to don't have anything to mess us up. So use the Follow Me tool. I'm going to select this surface as my path, so to speak. And this is going to be my profile. So I'm going to grab the Follow Me tool. Click there. And it looks like a mess right now because what it did is it took this long surface and, ex and literally followed it all the way around so it's intersecting. But there's a relatively easy way to clean this thing up. So we're going to grab our selection tool, drag a box around it, right click on it, and go to intersect faces with selection. So that means that everything that's been selected, if I, let's, uh, let's undo that. So notice there's no line here. So once I select this and then right click intersect faces with selection, notice it draws a line. That means that there's an intersection point there, another intersection and so on. And that's going to allow us to trim things off without getting rid of stuff that we, we don't want to get rid of. All right, so we're going to go in through here and we're just going to start getting rid of some of the lines that we don't need. And it's almost easier to do it if you're trying to follow um, one section of the roof. 
So let's just clean up some of this. And it'll start just by going and erasing it. Now you're going to find, as you go through this, you're going to, it's leaving some dots behind too. I'm going to make sure I get rid of those. Now you're going to find that if you get rid of a certain line, uh, the whole roof part will go away. And you'll have to undo that to get that to come back. And you know you just can't click that one until you click something else. All right, so we're going to clean up this one here, get these things. And it does take a little bit of time to get this thing done. All right, so I'm going to clean this up. OK, so what's happening here is this roof comes up here like this and follows here and then keeps going. So I'm going to get rid of this part of it. I know I don't need that. And I know I don't need this line because the roof's following this. And I'm just going to, oh, OK, so can't get rid of that one just yet. And so I'm going to get rid of, let's try this one. OK, so that helps clean that up a little bit. So now maybe I can get rid of, I know that I don't need this part here. OK, and we're just going to keep going in and start getting rid of stuff here on the top down. Some of these aren't going to be needed. Let's see. Did that get, oh, that got rid of that section there. So I'm going to undo that. And so I need this line and this line. So I'm not going to need this one because that's going to expose other stuff that I, I don't need. We're closing in on it. The more lines you get rid of, now you're actually starting to see the roof itself. Now, do I need this line? Uh, well, it comes up here and here, so I don't need this one. And I'm probably not going to need this one either, or this one. Okay, so I do need that. Well, no, I don't, because that is part of the other roof. So I'm going to get rid of here, and I can just keep going. And the more you get rid of, the easier it is to see what you're going to need and not need. And so we're closing in on this. And if you do get rid of a surface that you need, it's somewhat easy to fix. Okay, only a couple more clicks away. All right, so we don't need this line, nor this one. And we don't need these two. All right, so now you can actually see the roof in itself, that everything is angled in, and that's what a hip roof is. All right, so now what we want to do is to make this into a group. Right click, make group. And now that's in a group. And then what I'm going to come over here is add a layer, which is going to be the uh, roof layer. And say OK. And then I'm, to, I'm actually going to put that in my roof layer. OK, and so then I can go ahead and turn everything back on. And we can actually see what this looks like. And you can decide whether you like a hip roof or not. As you can see, we have a couple dots in here. So let's go into that right click, we'll edit that group. And let's go in here and grab the eraser tool and clean some of these things up. So that looks like that's going to be pretty good. All right. So that's how you put a hip roof on in SketchUp. All right, thanks for watching another video on how to draw a house and a roof in SketchUp. Next video coming out is going to show you how to do a hip roof with a reverse gable. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, we'll see you on the next one.